Yes, it is. Um, power of attraction. I was thinking about receiving. And there's a couple of lines which you all know, but I'm going to read them anyway. Um, do not focus, this is O Sensei translated, do not focus on your opponent at all. He may absorb your energy. The essence of the technique is to bring your opponent completely into your sphere. Then you can stand just where you like. True Budo is the cultivation of attraction with which to draw the whole opponent toward you. So, um, and then there was something that I was reading that I thought was interesting. And um, it was talking about seeing, we talk about soft eyes. So I think there's an analogy too with seeing. Um, and the line was, there's hard looking at, and there's soft receiving of images. So when we have soft eyes, we can more readily receive what's coming to us as opposing to go out and try to see it, grab it with our eyes, we let it come in. And this whole notion of um, attracting your opponent to you. And, uh, and, and, you know, do not look at your opponent at all. He may absorb your energy. We've all probably had some experience of that when we're trying to get uke before they get us. And they actually take our energy because we were organizing around uke as opposed to inviting uke into our space. So um, before we do a little exercise, I just want to check in. As some of you have heard those sayings of O Sensei, you may have read them over the years. And um, I think there's something really great about it. As you know, especially when we're doing Ikkyo, I try to help us avoid that idea of stepping into the Ikkyo. Because there's a tendency, and I was trained that way, it's like you go in and get it. But in a way, it's going after the attack as opposed to inviting the attack to the side or inviting it in and up. Um, and there's a number of techniques like that. Um, so I just wanna check in before I suggest some exercises we could play with and see if any of you have any thoughts about this notion. Um, have you, when you've heard those things that Osensei said, did they trigger anything in you or do you have any sense of how that might work. It's counterintuitive from a survival point of view. <laughs> yes, Sensei, that therein lies the challenge is that ukes can be so in that martial sense, you feel like you really need to pay attention to your adversary, your the person in front of you that's about to attack you. You know, and then and you're quieting that whole system down is incredibly difficult to do. And but it is, you know, that that would be our goal. That's what in a lot of ways we're training for as a ketoist is to sort of take in all of that we're seeing, including Uke is in that entire mix and it's all part of us. Yes, I agree. Um, the idea of bringing your opponent completely into your sphere so you invite them in. Yeah, I think it's really powerful. I mean, I see when we do it, we can actually do it. it Uke becomes nonplussed and less aggressive and it's incredibly difficult to do for sure. Thanks, Greg. Paul, have you ever thought you look like you're about to have a thought? Thought, sure. Um, it's the uke of the computer. <laughs> so I talk about this a lot of people. It's like going into the computer to get the information, the story, the whatever it is, and instead sitting back and the sense that the images, the sounds, whatever is coming from the computer and coming in. So in practicing in that with the computer. <sighs> That's a good point, because most of us are having some computer time these days, so it is an opportunity to practice, for sure. 
I thought that the um, uh, the bringing in the invitation, um, I didn't feel it so much as bringing it into my body, but I could feel bringing it into my space with enlarged my space. And I, I like that feel. Yes. Um, yeah. I, I think that's a really good point because the only way I can bring things into my body is I have to identify my body as not Wendy. Like I have to identify it as a sort of universal property. It's easier and I agree it's more pragmatic to know we all have like a sphere, it's like a bubble and we can invite them into that. And then they can be, they can be absorbed by the space instead of by me. Cause it's kind of creepy to actually bring them into my body if I'm identifying as a it's individual. Yes. Yeah. Good point. So I was thinking we could play with um, Tenkan to start with, because that's probably the easiest and in, um, in terms of sort of the idea of inviting something to come with us instead of Irini, which is entering into it. The, the Tenkan has more of a sense of coming in, turning, and then in this sense, like having them in our sphere um, rather than sending them on their way. So, we're not doing the exercise where we kind of send them on their way. It's more the exercise of inviting them in and then we pivot and we're sort of with them. And then we can imagine we might go a turn and do a technique. But let's do that initial tenkan from a point of view of um, inviting them in and being with them. And you can use an imaginary opponent or you could use something, a part of yourself. Maybe there's, a, in my case, my judgmentalness comes up, so I can invite my judgmentalness in and be with it. So if you have a, a critic, something you're struggling with, or it could imagine be another an, a person out there. So let's do that first, and we'll see. Um, the question in the inquiry is, how do you invite them in? What do you use to actually create the invitation? So it's not a bypass. Do you all know what I mean by bypass? Because bypass is kind of you go over there is different than let's be, let's go together, let's be together. So let's do it a few times back and forth and just see is it, if you're wanting to invite them in, how do you do that? What do you, where do you put your attention? What do you think about? And what do you use to be receptive? So do that for a few and then we'll check it out. Okay, do, do a couple more and then we'll check in. Okay. So I'm curious if you have any, um, what was your kind of thought process or 
feeling process that allowed you to invite them in as opposed to bypass. Yes, something wonderful. I, I felt something wonderful. I felt when my hands were, they were, it was like, here, would you like this? Or, oh, oh, thank you. It was just like giving and receiving the, the position and the feeling I had. It was lovely. Very nice. Thanks, Kat. Very lovely. Thank you. Cool. Yeah. Sensei, I had a thoughts of a lot of times you'll see beginners with their hands straight out like this and in really sort of stiff arm and and as something about that that's not going to that's not inviting right so to have a quality that's there's a softness sort of quality that's a bit more inviting to the hand and the gesture and then I was thinking a lot about posture and and back and shoulders and uprightness Right nice. now, that's a that's a quality where your lip like weight is a little bit more on the heels rather than the balls of the feet, right? Yeah. Which is a which is a big tendency when feeling threatened is to sort of lean into it or getting ready to pounce, right? And having this more sort of aloof feeling by by sitting back on your heels. Nice, and and when you shift back to it, it it. it has a feeling of receptivity and drawing in. Yes, nice, nice, very nice. I was playing with choice. Like um, when I thought about inviting in fear, it, um, it's like, oh, there's, there's a possibility here by inviting it in and growing from it. So fear, I may not wanna send on its way I actually, but if I think of somebody that, you know, my boss or whatever, it's like, no, I really, like to just send you on your way. I don't need you. In my space. <laughs> so it was, it was nice to like, so there's a choice there. It's like, I can bite things in or people in, uh, but there's definitely times where I'm like, no, nah, no, I'm not that this one is not gonna uh, come even close. I'm just going to send it on, on its way. Yeah. No, I mean, it's great that we can have that choice and, you know, have the wisdom to know when to do which. Because that, that, that comes from, I think, having a, a little bit of a cur more courage or confidence mm -hmm. that I can choose even if something's scary or painful to be with it. Or I can choose, yeah, now is not the time. Right. It makes a lot of sense. Thanks, Lou. Well, Sensei, I, I had similar feelings that um, Kat did. It felt, I, I felt that I was welcoming in a friend and it felt very warm. And, and I had a, a warm sense of feeling with the whole exercise that was a new experience because in the old dojo, it was always a very frustrating experience to do this practice from static because there were quite a few that would love to lock you out and not allow and make you really do the technique exactly right every time to get through it and so in the midst of having this wonderful experience that popped up that experience and I thought, well, okay, I'm gonna work with this since it's here. And I, I drew it in rather than fighting it, you know, or feeling locked, I just welcomed it in and then turned. And I thought, wow, that felt very powerful. And even if, even if maybe it wouldn't really work, it just felt good that, to relax into it. I mean, maybe that's a beginning. You know. I, I definitely think it's the beginning. I think you're really onto something. And, you know, my experience and my theory is if you can't feel it, you can't fight it. And by softening, it's much harder for them to fight. If I meet their hardness with hardness, then they have something to organize around. If I get soft, then they have this kind of weird, strange feeling. And as I've said before, in terms of powerful martial arts, 
Sistema and um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, two of the strongest arts on the planet, they beat out all the other martial artists and they're the softest because people can't feel what they're doing. They're so soft. And then the next thing you know, they're tapping out. So, um, so there's a huge power in that softness. And um, it flies in the face of old school, which is boom, that's strong. As opposed to, you know, Bruce Lee, who was fantastic, but he did sticky hands and push hands for two years before he was ever allowed to go hard. So that, uh, so there's a huge power in that receiving. And I think making that, you know, sphere, like Elizabeth was talking about, to make the assumption, you're already part of me, so I don't need to fight you. But like Greg says, that's not an easy call if the UK tries to intimidate. And I think um, when that would happen, the instruction was to, well, just leave your hand there and move around it and relax. And so it became a very focal point around this. And, and that wasn't helpful. You, I think you need to engage the mind and relax and think inviting in. Yeah, I, I feel like when I started with that thought, then it could move down through my body, hopefully, and, and would help me by initiating it from thought and then knowing, okay, I, can, I should relax into this and invite it in. It's a mind-body combo that you, yes. I think you need. Yes, it, it is. And to have the overarching view that we're not separate. I mean, it feels like we're separate, but the practice is that we're not. And then, and that, and that gives a completely different kind of context for us to do this with. We, if like, if I'm not separate, I can still hurt myself. <laughs> but it's different than the feeling of you're doing that to me. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I know I'm struggling with myself. Um, yeah. that, that that's a different kind of a masukatsu atsukatsu thing. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Very cool. Oh. Um, I was just playing with the technique since I didn't know exactly the movement, but I, there was two ways that it kind of came in. If it, I could come in and let like that front leg come through with it and turn, which is kind of like letting the energy come in and turning, or almost that leg stays in place and I welcome it in. And then that I just revolve around that centered place in my leg. And they felt very different. And, so that's just what I was playing with. Oh, absolutely. You know, when we turn, I've said this many times, there's the sweeping back or there's the pushing forward. And they're both ways to get around the corner. So you can get around the corner by stepping forward or you can get around the corner by sweeping back. And it's interesting to do both and see which one. I mean, practice both and then let your intuition decide in the moment. Right. So I was watching you and then going, okay, there's, <laughs> yep. what, what's my body going to do? <laughs> well, we've been trained in Aikido is to sweep it back. But there are many um, variations where I'm um, moving forward, actually, um, instead of sweeping back, pushing forward generates more forward energy, which can create more flow in the situation. So they're both really useful in terms of um, practice. Aikido people tend to be a little bit Pavlovian for this way. Like as soon as they want to turn, Aikido people tend to want to do that. So I encourage everyone to practice coming around the corner that way so they have more flexibility. They're more ambidextrous with how they turn. Okay, um, let's try another one. So let's try the imaginary um, katadori. So Uke is coming to grab, and we want to invite Uke in. And then there's an Ikkyo that can happen, or a Kokyu, or any of it. But it's that moment where they're coming to our shoulder. So you present your shoulder. If I stand with my left foot forward, my left shoulder is presented. The attacker is going to come and try to grab my, it's called kata, or my shoulder. And then what the technique sets up is, how do you draw the attacker to you? So in a certain sense, I kind of scoop their arm, touch their hand, and then from there, usually it's an ikkyo, but you can do other things. You could do a number of things. But let's just play with that idea because um, they're coming more to our body and our imagination, so they're in closer. 
Like here, they were coming to our hand, which has a distance from the core. Now they're gonna to come to touch our shoulder. And so in this imaginary practice, we're gonna actually take their hand and bring it to our shoulder. Uh, and then from there, you can pick up the hand and do a number of things, which is not what we're focused on, but just what's it like to invite them into the shoulder um, because it's a little closer. So you can use the same imaginary adversary or a different one if you want. It can be yourself, it can be someone else. And they're coming and they're gonna grab your shoulder. How can you invite them instead of push them away or stiffen against it? So let's, let's do the same practice with that for a few minutes. So offer your shoulder and imagine they're coming to grab and you're going to move back and invite them in. Do two more and then we'll check in. Okay, let's have a little check in and see what you might have noticed with the imaginary, it's called a kata attack for Paul's sake, grabbing the shoulder. I saw it in the gas station once, it was really interesting. I saw this guy get into an altercation and he reached out and grabbed the guy's <laughs> um, shoulder just like that. I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> I've never seen a you know, street attack. It was so perfect set up for Nikio. <clears throat> Any thoughts? <clears throat> I'll start, <laughs> not knowing. Um, so the contrast I felt was one is if I pivoted around my back leg, it was kind of like I felt like I was pulling away. There was a distancing. Whereas if it came in and I let it be more linear in, kind of absorbing it in and then moving it through, it seemed more welcoming. So if I started, Pivoting right away felt like I was pulling away, but if I let it come more straight in and through, it felt very yeah. different. No, you make a really good point because that's what we try to do. And Aikido, when they come, is step back with the foot so that there's room for the person's body to come in here, but we keep the weight a little bit forward so that <clears throat> we have a nice positive feeling, but we've made all this room here for the person to come in. If we don't step back and we just go like this, then they run right into our <clears throat> stance. So that's, that, that's an accurate view of the, why we do the form the way we do it. Oh. Sensei, I was playing with uh, the softness of the shoulder, not 
not tensing up or like really trying to focus on not thinking about like the grab. So it grabs something that's still soft as it folds back. And then to what you were just saying, playing with stepping back if it's a right kata grab, my right side, I can step back with that right foot or I can step forward with the left foot and draw the shoulder back mm. at the same time. So there's still that feeling and I, I feel, and I mean, I'd have to play with it on the mat, but I feel like I do it in different circumstances, depending on sort of timing and UK or what I'm playing with. There's a little bit more forward quality to the, you're still drawing back, but you're still coming forward. It's as if you're in a conversation saying like, I, I understand your point, but I'm still going this direction. You, you're doing that and at the same time you're receiving because that's what yeah. we're looking at. I understand your point, but I'm still going this direction. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that's that's very interesting. It would be fun to noodle around with that with a partner. And, and I'm not very good at it. You're better at it than me. And then Satomi, Satomi Sensei is amazing at it. But that whole quality of shoulder feeling where he could just stand there on the line and around and not oh, yeah. move his feet at all, but allow the shoulder to do all to be yeah. so soft and the wave to come up through the shoulder. Yeah, he would do it and then he would do it quick. He got, I mean, he could do it like that to show you. And then when you went to touch him like this, you just go. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You'd have all that spiral, soft spiral in it. And just, yeah, very power powerful. Um, I was remembering Sensei, um, the static version of that came. Yeah. I, I don't think we've done, yeah. You have to stand and then, you know, do this. Yeah. And how how much that made my body tense up right away when I remembered that as I was practicing. And then I could feel my shoulder was not loose like Greg had talked about. And I went, oh, I'm, I'm not getting it in my body yet. I was still tensing from earlier practice. So finally I noticed that and then relaxed it. I had to step back though and do the whole motion. I don't have the little short wave thing at all yet, but stepping back and roll and softening the shoulder and, and inviting it in and not grabbing too soon because I was grabbing right away and I was, then that made me tense. It must would make the uke tense. So I waited a bit until the wave came up and then until I felt it come up in the motion and then I continued with the technique and that felt so much better. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, very nice. And also if you, when you step back, you curve a little, you make more space for Uke to reach out rather than a short step back than Uke. Yeah. More of a tendency to clash there. Yeah, this is especially a clash. I mean, yeah. Talk. I remember Satomi Sensei used to do this thing sometimes where he'd take the, the uke was coming the, gently under their elbow and draw it in so that they came in even further. And it's so not what uke expected. They expected to push it and all of a sudden they're being, they're being taken in even further. Um, it was such an amazing like, oh, when you take them in, then everything softens together. Uh, it, it's it's interesting to do the imaginary stuff because sometimes that's hard without a, a real opponent, of course. But in the first couple of times, I'm like, oh, I only have the arm, right? Um, and and so then I started playing with what I pick. What if I pick up the center of my uke as well? Uh, and and then my 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 movement just became much bigger and and much um, much bigger lines. It was. It was uh, and that was very fun because I, I usually was imaginary stuff. It's harder for me to really picture it, but this one was like, oh, 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 that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's very nice. I sometimes would imagine that I was going to concentrate behind the UK and imagine that my movement was actually going to sort of be behind them to bring them in so that UK suddenly just felt drawn in rather than, as you say, reaching out and grabbing the arm. <clears throat> 
But that has to do with the same thing you said in the beginning, uh, Elizabeth, around the sphere, that I have to imagine Uke's in my sphere. And so when I'm moving, <clears throat> I can connect with parts of them, like behind them, and imagine my hand on their back and things like that, which is very different than just like, oh my God, their hand's going to grab me. And as Ula said, I have to atemi and then grab the hand. And yeah, which is all very um, kind of creates tension, as I remember. Cool. You up for one more? So the last one I thought would be fun would be imaginary Yokomunuchi Shihonage. And just that feeling that we bring them, you know, toward us and then through, yes. But really what we're doing is we're kind of, we're kind of stepping in such a way to invite them toward us and through. I find in the Shihonage, if I cannot just like try to push them away, but if the Yokomun's coming, if I can have a feeling of shifting back a little and bringing them toward me and then turning to set up for the shihonage, um, uke gets much more softened by that. So uh, Paul, what it is, is that the attack is gonna be a yokomen, it's that um, cut to the side and they're coming right here to our neck. And what we do is we put our hands up, um, one kind of goes toward the core and the other, and then we bring the, the hand down toward us and then turn it away and then we step under it and so on. But we don't have to worry about stepping under it. It's more the feeling that this chop that's coming to our neck gets to be drawn down in a kind of semi-circle way, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, so it's drawing it down and through and then you extend it and then there's a technique that comes after that. But what we wanna study is how do we not, um, there's a tendency to cut it really short, to try to push them away and through. And if we can use the same exercise to draw them to us a little bit more before we extend it through. So let's do imaginary Yokomunuchi Shihonage and just that first blending part from the point of view of how do we attract them, accept them, receive them, be with them and the rest of it. Let's do a couple more and then we'll check in. Okay. I can tell you, I, I certainly noticed the, the tendency to want to push it through quickly and not take it in and kind of try to get to that place where I'm controlling that risk. So I had to really work with my weight to make more space for them to come in, shift onto that back foot a bit. Anyone else come up with a way to be more receptive in that moment, tricky little moment.
for me, it's a little hard with this one without the okay there. Yeah, like, where am I? <laughs> where is he, she, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it helps to really like to think, okay, they're coming right here. And I have to manage that. And then I want to be able to, I mean, my tendency is to want to pop them through right away. But how do I just sort of take them, be more receptive in that? Mm -hmm. I like the idea, where is the UK? I like those words. Somehow that sounds like a good thing to think about. Where or who? You can hear from me, but. <laughs> you couldn't hear? In here. Oh. Oh, oh, in the head. Oh, yes. Thank you. I tend to be my own worst attacker. <laughs> in the head. That's good. Thank you. Sensei, that there was a feeling of the um, sort of weight underside of arms, and and uh, and letting gravity do more of the work. You know, oh, yeah. not 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 adding to more of it. You know, the, my arms weigh a certain. All of our arms have a few pounds to them, right? And so there's some weight that 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 weight is a powerful sort of weight for somebody else to. But it's a different quality of touch than though it's not me you know they can they can sense or feel if i'm if i activate muscles in that moment in time so if they can't sense that then there's there's more possibilities yeah and then i was and i was thinking about it with, with in the other ten con we were doing too of how brilliant of a practice it is to take off the mat and to be so comfortable with another human being and, and it happened to me today where a client was sort of criticizing our work to my face, like standing off to me, looking at some work that we had done, some painting work. And my instinct was to turn right next to him, almost shoulder to shoulder, like within his personal space in a lot of ways, to look at what he is seeing through his eyes and to also sort of build his case for him like make sure hey i want to make sure i got this right you're saying like this where you see this little bit of texture difference here in this post right nice. yeah and 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 there's like a, there's a there's a powerful moment in that because now i'm not adversarial i'm i'm like together like try hey what is going on here and being curious of what they're seeing right very nice you get to like physically connect his point of view, I like it. Very icky of you. And but then, but the, to be able to practice that moment in time next to people and being comfortable in your own skin next to them, so that they they can sense and feel that comfortness, right? That that that's the quality that I think you know the movement that you do where you're working on bringing it straight straight into your body. Yeah. Tenkan, right? I think that's a powerful moment in time because you're bringing it straight into you and they're coming into your personal space. And the one that's more comfortable in that moment in time has more awareness or more options, let's say. Yes, 100%. And I think there's a connection between confidence and relaxation and just knowing it's okay for someone to be uncomfortable or it's okay for us to be uncomfortable. We don't always have to be comfortable. We can relax with that. Instead of like, I have to make it okay and make it feel right. It's like, okay, it's a little weird and it gets to be. And, and I was having this discussion with a beginner the other day because he was telling me how he gets uh, dizzy really easy, right? And I was telling him that in the beginning days of Aikido, I used to get really dizzy all the time doing the rolls and coming up off the mat, coming up and down. And, and my whole life, right, the whole room would spin a few times. And that still happens to this day after all the years and all the ukemi and all the things I do. I still come up dizzy, but I'm very comfortable in it. it there were once upon a time it was uncomfortable. But now I come up and I'm like, oh, cool, the room's spinning. You know, and it goes, it does a one revolution and I settle down and it's no big deal. Nice. Yeah, I like that. So starting to be able to relax with discomfort is really key. Thank you. 
Thanks, Greg. That was great. I had a sense, um, I know it's kind of like a physics thing, but these two masses, and as the other mass came in, it became one mass and that formed a new center that was actually moving the mass, where the mass was moving from. And so that created a connection, um, a sense of connecting in that last part versus getting rid of the other mass. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's great, Paul. I like that. It's kind of a bigger, the two things come together and they make a bigger sphere. Nice. Very nice. Sensei, could you explain a little bit more about how you were exploring cutting the movement short? Because I was tr trying to get a feel for that to figure out if I was doing that, because I've always felt that Chihonage was one of the more beautiful techniques because one's coming in with a sphere and you're moving with another sphere and they both kind of join into one sphere. And it's always been a really felt very flowing to me, but I'm wondering that maybe I never noticed if I was cutting short or not. And I'm wondering what that would be like. What I see the most that happens is if the attacker is coming and what um, Nagi does is stop and then step and then stop and then move the person's hands. So as soon as Nagi stops, everything stops. And so there's a tendency a lot is to focus so much on the strike that you grab the hand and then you turn and, and there's kind of a stopping and a locking, which is slightly different than um, taking hand, rowing back a little bit, and then moving that forward, keeping that kind of feeling going. Generally, people plant. Generally, they come through right here, they'll plant, and then they, they move the hand, but their legs stop moving, and there's not a, a flowy feeling to it. And that's when Uke usually kind of locks up a bit too. So I found to keep everything going, is to row back a little bit and then move and then step and keep it all to try to avoid planting or stopping. I do remember that being a problem with me. Um, my hand would move before I would step through. Yeah. So, so that's what you're kind of alluding to. And maybe to break that habit is, is to kind of receive it full body with the hip, roll back and we'll feel your leg will naturally maybe want to then come forward. Yeah, so, so the leg moves the hand rather than planting and moving the hand, yeah. Yeah. which is what the majority of people do. They stop, they plant, and they move their hands. Me. <laughs> well, okay. most people. So, yeah. you know, part of flow is to keep moving and then eventually to become sophisticated enough to be able to move without overt movement. The, the, the feeling of movement is still there, even though we're not running around a lot. But I think it has to start with actually physically, physically moving, physically keeping it going. Working with that with Adam, because he came from a more static style too. And so he'll stop and then try to get some hand thing and then the UKs lock up. So I just tell him, just keep moving, keep moving, keep moving, and you'll get a hand thing, but keep moving because then UK stays more fluid if we keep moving. Thank you, Sensei. Okay, let's do um, the end with a little bit of um, Hoken mind, body, spirit practice. So having our intention, we're gonna speak out loud and energize it. Okay, so Taking our both hands out, taking a moment, pointing them to the heavens and stirring the cosmic soup and inviting wisdom traditions from all times, all places and all eons to support our intentions for good in the world. Lightning light the heaven and bringing it into us. Oh. And then taking our nice form, inviting some energy up from the earth, down from the sky. Imagine behind us, our backs are open, it's flowing through us. Okay, let's say our intention. 
I wish to bring more joyful perseverance into the world and send it out. I wish to invite more joyful perseverance in the world. Send it out. I wish to invite more joyful perseverance. Cut once, cut again, and now a ki. Hey! Just feel like going out into the world, your connection to the sky and the earth. Open our backs again, invite a little more Aiki spirit to flow through us, and let's do it again. I wish to invite more joyful perseverance in the world. Send it out. I wish to invite more joyful perseverance in the world. Send it out. I wish to invite more joyful perseverance in the world. Cut once, cut again. And a ki. Hey! Okay, last time. Again, opening to the sky above us, the earth below us, feeling the key flowing through us out into the world. Ready, and I wish to invite more joyful perseverance in the world. Send it out. I wish to invite more joyful perseverance in the world. Send it out. I wish to invite more joyful perseverance in the world. Cut, cut again, and the last ki. Hi! Hey! Standing in it for a moment, sensing the key flowing around you, through you, your intention extending out into the world. Okay, let's put our both hands to the side. So standing bow. Putting our both hands away. Let's end with a couple of heaven and earth readings, taking a moment to align ourselves. Now let's dip down, taking some key from the earth, reaching up to the heavens, expanding out into the world. Drawing from the earth, reaching to the stars and radiating out. Let's do two more. And now let's stand in it for a moment. Just sense the connection to the space and heaven and earth and send some good energy out, positive key into the world. A moment of appreciation for our friends and training partners, for our community, our IT community around the whole globe, all our friends, for our teachers and mentors, for O Sensei's vision, and for our own hearts. And let's bow out. Domo, arigato gozaimashita. So thank you all for joining. And um, I'm really, I learned some stuff. It was really a great session, I thought, from my point of view. And uh, I just think it's, uh, the line about soft eyes, there's hard looking at and there's soft receiving of images. And then our own sort of working at how do I make my sphere big enough so that I can include others and welcome them and to make the connection rather than grabbing or pushing away. Whole life practice, but very much worth continuing to think about and play with. 
So thank you all so much for joining. Um, once again, if you ever have any thoughts or ideas, anything you'd like to explore, um, shoot me an email and it can be something we've already gone over. We can go over it again. So feel free that way. Greg, thank you as always for hosting and also for prodding me to come up with a theme that I get to think about and research. So thanks for that. Thank you, Sensei. Good to see everybody. Thank you, everyone. Good to see you. Thank you all. Thank you, Sensei. Thank you, Greg, for hosting. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. I hope to see you next week. Have a great week, everybody. Lots of noble, awesome shininess. <laughs> you too. Sounds good. Bye, everyone. Bye.